Jacob, thank you very much. Well, in this series, why in the world would we have expected anything different? As a three touchdown underdog, OSU and its much maligned senior quarterback Taylor Cornelius giving the Sooners all they could possibly handle. Cornelius throwing for a career high 501 yards tonight. He needed only three more on a two point conversion to give OSU a lead with a minute to go. Union grad Trey Brown made the stop and the Sooners playoff hopes remain alive by the slimmest of margins. Well, that's, that's why they call it Bedlam. Uh, lived up to the name, lived up to the rivalry. So it was a hell of a college football game. Uh, sure would like to complete that last pass, but sometimes in life things don't always go your way. So we were, I mean, we were confident in the play call. We were confident in the play. We've been running it. Time was open. Just kind of freaking throw them the ball. Man, it was, it was amazing. It was surreal. You know, last play of the game, got a chance to do something. It was hard for us, but um, we made up for it at the end. As we've come to expect in Bedlam, this thing was an offensive bonanza. First seven drives today, six touchdowns, one field goal. The team's trade scores in the final 90 seconds of the first half. Kyler Murray, the home run ball for Marquise Brown, 34-21 OU. Less than a minute later, Chuba Hubbard in for an injured Justice Hill dealing with a rib injury, makes it 34-28 at the break. Second half, the defenses would settle in. A Brooks touchdown makes it 41-35 OU after three. Hubbard's third touchdown of the day, making it 41-41 in the fourth. A missed PAT by Matt Amendola was huge. Final minutes still tied OSU driving, but Hubbard's fumble setting the stage for a go-ahead score for the Sooners. OSU answers, nine plays, 71 yards on fourth and 12. Cornelius for Wallace. 10 catches, 220 yards, make it 48-47, and Coach Gundy says we're going for two in the win. Cornelius rolling right, looked like he had him open, but Brown with the breakup, and the Sooners survive. But the great thing for us right now is every goal that we want to be in front of us is right there in front of us, and that you got to win these games to do that. Sometimes you got to win them when you're not your best. Uh, we know here in the last couple, we're going to have to find a way to get it to our best. At the end of the day, you know, no win is a bad win. Um, I feel like, you know, we came out here and we, we continue to fight and we continue to do what our coaches told us, which was forgetting and drive on, you know, no matter what happens, good or bad. And I feel like, you know, as a, as a defense, as a whole, that's what we did. You know, we're never satisfied. So I think that's why we continue to, you know, put up the numbers we do. And, you know, we know the urgency. We know what's at stake. And for us as offense, we just want to be the best in the country. I told the team couldn't be any more proud of them. Um, Came to the fight and stood tall, said, here I am, let's play. Uh, that's what we asked them to do, that's what they did. So uh, um, as a coach, that's all you can ask. I understand uh, we want to come out on top and have more points than them at the end of the day. Um, but those guys put themselves in position to win the ball game. And they, they played extremely hard and gave everything that they had. So we're proud of them. Jacob, one final note, OU kicker Austin Seibert, two field goals, five extra points, becomes OU and the Big 12's all-time leading scorer tonight. The Sooners will host Kansas next week. Then that monster matchup with West Virginia. OSU, meanwhile, drops to five and five. They get their crack at the Mountaineers next Saturday in Stillwater. From here in Norman, where it was Bedlam, Caden McFarland, two works for you.